everyone and welcome to my channel. If you love vampires, then you will love the story I have for you today. Vampires are mostly associated with Eastern Europe, but even in countries like Great Britain, there are vampire legends that date back centuries. Vampire stories even exist in ancient Greek and African mythology. I will probably explore more of these in later videos. Today, however, I want to head over to England, to the county of Cumbria. There is a little village about 20 kilometers southeast of Carlisle named Croglin. Croglin is a quiet, scenic little place that apparently boasts quite a few tourists due to its local vampire legend. Now, scholars have debunked the story, calling it just a fabricated tale from the mind of a writer and artist named Augustus Hare, who penned the tale in his book, Story of My Life. Now, I am currently reading a few volumes of this massive memoir, and I can understand why people do not trust the stories written in this book. Augustus Hare clearly has a penchant for ghost stories, and his casual, anecdotal style of writing lacks any seriousness, making it the literary equivalent of a campfire story or urban legend. On top of that, most of the stories in this book are told to him by another narrator, so that there's no research on his part. The tale of Croglin Grange first appears in Volume 4, of story of my life and it's told to him by a man named Captain Fisher. Fisher claimed to have lived at Croglin Grange for a while before his family moved to a bigger place. They let out Croglin Grange to three siblings, two brothers and a sister, Edward, Michael and Amelia Cranswell. According to this account, they were excellent tenants and a delightful family who were very popular with the local residents. Croglin Grange itself was a single-story house, but it suited the needs of the Cranswells. They spent their first winter and spring in relative bliss with no incident whatsoever. However, the following summer, their lives would change forever. It was one very humid evening when the sister, Amelia, was unable to sleep and lay on her bed, staring out the window at the beautiful clear night sky. She had fastened her window, but did not close the shutters. She had a view of a churchyard in the distance, and while gazing in its direction, she noticed two glowing red lights emerge in the darkness. The source of the lights appeared, too, in the form of a ghastly figure that seemed to be coming closer and closer. Amelia sat up in her bed, completely paralyzed, watching with terror as the figure came closer and closer towards her bedroom window. But as soon as it reached the house, she saw it turn around the building and away from her bedroom. She saw this as her chance and ran to the door which was right next to the window. As she was unlocking the door to leave the room, Amelia heard a scratching noise at the window. She ran back to her bed and hid under the covers. Then the scratching stopped and she heard the unmistakable sound of a window latch unfastening. Suddenly a single pane of the window fell and crashed to the floor. A decayed hand with long bony fingers reached through and turned the handle of the window from the inside. Paralyzed with fear, Amelia could not scream. The figure with its horrible, decrepit face, with flaming red eyes, approached the bed. It twisted its long bony fingers in her hair and dragged her over the side of the bed. The creature sunk its sharp, rotten teeth into her neck, and that's when Amelia screamed, screamed as loud as she could. Her brothers rushed to the room, but the door was locked. They broke the door down, and the creature fled. Poor Amelia was left traumatized and severely wounded, blood flowing out of the gaping tears in her neck. One brother had pursued the creature, but it was too quick as it leapt in enormous strides and disappeared over the churchyard walls. 
Luckily for Amelia, her wound healed, but her doctor thought a change of scenery would do her good. Her brothers took her to Switzerland, where she occupied her time with leisurely mountain walks. They were not in Switzerland for long, however. When autumn came along, it was Amelia herself who insisted they return to Crogland Grange to fulfill the rest of their seven-year lease. Amelia occupied her old room, but the brothers moved to a room opposite hers and kept loaded pistols ready. The winter passed by with no incident. However, in March, Amelia was awakened by that familiar scratching sound at the window. Even though the shutters were drawn this time, the same hideous, shriveled face appeared at the top panes of the window, where the shutters did not cover. The creature looked down at her, and she let out a loud scream, alerting her brothers. The monster scurried away into the darkness, but the brothers gave chase. One fired his pistol and shot the creature in the leg, but it did not stop. It scrambled over the churchyard wall and into an old ancient vault belonging to a family long extinct. The very next day, a group of residents from Croglin Grange, including the two brothers, made their way to the crypt. They opened it to find many coffins inside. All of them appeared to be broken into, desecrated with the contents scattered all over the floor. All of them except one. One coffin remained intact. The villagers lifted the lid to find the shriveled, brown, hideous figure that had terrorized the tenants of Croglin Grange. In its leg, they found the marks of a pistol shot, clearly a recent wound. The residents of Croglin took the body and burnt it. The vampire of Croglin Grange was no more. Now, whether this story is true or not is up for debate, as I mentioned earlier. The scholars who debunked the story stated that Croglin Grange as a building never existed. It was also disputed because the nearest church was a very distant one mile away. But in the 1930s, Clive Ross discovered that the building that is now called Croglin Low Hall was in fact called Croglin Grange. And a chapel did exist on the grounds near the building. However, I would also like to point out that in Hare's original story, no names were given for the siblings. It was only in later retellings that the names of Amelia, Michael, and Edward Cranswell was given. The proof or the source of these names is unclear. Some feel that these names were made up for purposes of retelling the story. We might never know. As the vampire myth remains as popular as ever, the British Isles can at least boast about its fair share of blood-sucking monsters, one of its most famous being the Vampire of Croglin Grange. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed the story, please click the like button and share. Subscribe to my channel and check out more content like this. And if you want to interact with me on Twitter, you can do so. I will put the link up on the screen. Until next time, goodbye.